What a cliche! Presented by Still a Frog. What a cliche! The gardener really stop looking. She scolded herself. He's just an easy on the eyes young man. That's all. Young being the warning word in that observation. Young as in beware, you are now entering cougar territory. Young as in one day they'll be walking arm in arm through the grocery store, and passersby would reflect on how sweet it was for his son to accompany his mother on a shopping trip. Just young. Ugh. But why not the gardener or the pool boy or the UPS delivery man? Were these not all wanton staples of the genre dubbed hot flash fantasies? Not that she was menopausal, yet. Hell, any number of famous middle-aged male celebrities could proudly trot out their 20-year-old of the moment and be lauded for it. Flip the record on that narrative, and women doing the same thing were mocked and painted as desperate harpies trying to cling to whatever youth they had left. Where had this country's social standards come from? In Europe, May-December romances were just a normal thing, weren't they? But in America... Why were women crucified for following their hearts? Where was their admiring at a girl upon taking up with a virile younger man? She was going off on a disgusted tangent of an interior monologue, she realized. But as she lay reading in her chase on the patio, watching Corey remulch the gardens, those triceps and biceps flexing as he lifted the seemingly heavy bags of red cedar... Uh, Okay, focus. Back to the task at hand. She had a deadline coming up. The HR department was updating the employee handbook. Each employee may carry 80 hours of accrued PTO over into a new calendar year. Employees are responsible for monitoring and taking their PTO over the course of a year so that they do not lose time accrued when the current calendar year ends. Oh, forget this. She glanced up again. This time, though, he happened to turn around at the exact moment. Damn. Corey smiled, and she thought she detected a hint of a blush. Ma'am. Dear God, he called her ma'am. He paused and then walked over to her, sweat glistening, muscles rippling. No, this is not a Harlequin romance. Eyes on the face. Eyes on the face. Yes, Corey? Once we get this bed done, I wanted to ask you how you'd like me to do the front bed, the one next to the porch. I know last year we did a mix of perennials and annuals, but I thought maybe a little something different this season. He coyly grinned as though holding in a secret he was just bursting to tell her. Yes, she replied, a bit too excitedly, participating in his boyish fun. Just stop, will you? The angel on her shoulder sighed. The one who realized this young man could theoretically be her son. Granted, she would have been a teen mom when she had him. Okay, an older teen mom. Okay, fine, an early 20-something mom. Well, I was just thinking going with a theme. Red. He held both hands in the air as though broadcasting this horticulture headline. Red. She loved it. Maybe a little, or perhaps she wasn't crazy about it at all. Did it really matter, though? Really? Perfect! You mean like all red flowers? Yes, along with the other plantings to go with your energetic personality, he smiled. He'd pegged her as having an energetic personality? That was something. Though she'd prefer he'd use an adjective like sultry or fiery or passionate or even just hot. Can you have a hot personality? What the fuck are you thinking right now? Great idea, Corey. Let's do it. He could have said, let's stick paper mache flowers into the ground. They'll at least be around until the next rainstorm, and she would have agreed. Cool, he said. Cool, she echoed. Can I bring you something to drink? Water? Soda? A beer? Did she really just offer him a beer? Could she get arrested for that? What the hell was she doing here? Beer would be cool, he quickly answered. Okay, then, to Heineken's it was. She retrieved the drinks, praying that she was not committing a felony, and then resumed her place on the chase. Corey sat in the Adirondack chair across from her. Once upon a time, that chair had had a twin. They'd purchased them while vacationing in Shroon Lake. They liked the folksiness of it, telling friends and guests, Yep, we got those chairs in the actual Adirondacks. Doesn't get more authentic than that, they'd laugh. It was just one now, a single chair looking rather out of place, 
on a patio otherwise populated by Ikea-style furnishings that, needless to say, lacked any authenticity. The irony of it all would hit anyone over the head. She herself, of course, a stand-in for the abandoned chair, awkwardly trying to fit in among all new furnishings. He'd left her and took the other chair with him just over two years ago now. He'd found himself his own cliché. He'd been one of the lauded ones. He'd gotten his attaboy. He didn't get mistaken for her father or potentially even grandfather when they grocery shopped. Yes, she was that much younger. Thanks, Corey said as he took the ice-cold beer. So, Red, she tittered. This was awkward as hell. Yeah, I just came up with it. Inspired, she said encouragingly. Truly inspired. Thanks. Mrs. H, he then began. Oh, God, please no. She realized she liked ma'am better. Mrs. H made her sound like the house dress wearing tight bunned Marion Cunningham from Happy Days. Did this boy even know what Happy Days was? She swigged hard on her beer. Yes, Corey? If you don't mind my asking, it's just that I see you, not like I watch you creepily or anything like that. It's just that you're always alone out here or in the house and you look, well, he paused. She was intrigued and admittedly caught off guard somewhat. Go on, she prodded. I remember when Mr. H was here, you looked happier, I guess. And now it seems you're just kind of sad a lot. I, I know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything, but that's why I thought maybe the red to, you know, make you feel more alive whenever you saw it. Wow, she began. Not sure how to respond here. Well, I guess you could be. So you think I look sad most of the time? She sat upright in her chase. Maybe not all the time, but yeah, kinda. Hmm, was all she said. They sat for a moment, a long moment in silence. I should get back to it, Corey smiled, draining the last of his beer. He headed back toward the mulch stacks. She watched him for a minute. Mrs. H? He turned to face her. Yes, Corey? Can I ask you something? Shoot, she smiled. There's this girl. I really like her, but the thing is she's kind of, well, younger than me. I'm 23 and she's 18. Do you think that's too much of a difference? I mean, I know girls mature faster and all, so I figured, but... Do you think it's too much? Ah, the irony. And so the world turns. She laughed, despite herself, and to Corey's confusion. No, Corey, I think if you really like the girl, go for it. She winked. And now, for some reason, she truly felt like the shriveled up old sage people trekked up the mountains to see for the eons worth of wisdom she had to dispense. Corey, she called as he headed back to work. Yeah? I really do like it, she said, convincing herself. What's that? The red. Good, he said. It suits you. Uh -huh.